I'm going to start off tonight by telling you a short story. So not very long ago, a man woke up in his hallway, on his back, disoriented, bad pain in his knee, and the last memory he had was putting his head down on a pillow about 30 feet away. Now that man was me. So a few things were immediately clear. One, I had walked into a wall while sleepwalking. Number two, I don't sleepwalk with my arms out in front of me like a zombie. Which is a pity, because number three, sleepwalking into a wall really hurts. So I've long been a sleep talker, but this was the first time I had become mobile. So I went to my doctor, spent a night in the sleep lab, and he came back a couple days later and he said, Dave, I gotta be honest with you. We don't know what's going on. You know, you're not having seizures. You don't have any medical disorder. So the only thing I can tell you is, try to take it easy. So this was disconcerting on many, many levels. <laughs> the biggest one was that this was the first time a doctor had ever admitted to me that he didn't know what was going on, and he didn't know how to help me. It was almost as if I had sleepwalked past the medical frontier. So we now know that sleep, despite taking up a third of our lives, is one of the greatest mysteries of science. Scientists still don't know what seems like the most basic question, which is why do we need to sleep? Until a generation ago, most doctors didn't even think it was something that they should think about. Most doctors thought that their responsibility ended as soon as the patient fell asleep. There was simply no understanding that while you were asleep, your brain could be doing anything important. Uh, now we realize that there are actually three stages of consciousness. One, which is being awake, which hopefully all of us in this room are right now. Uh, number two is REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. So this is the stage when you basically, most if not all of your dreams happen. And your body essentially paralyzes itself so you don't act out all the dreams happening in your head. So some people this doesn't work correctly and they can literally run down the, uh, run down the street while sleepwalking and have no understanding. Or they can jump out of windows and, and still be asleep. Uh, then the other part of sleep is all the rest basically, which is non-REM sleep. So doctors now are looking at, si at sleep in a different way, and they almost think that they're in the golden age of their field. There's new discoveries coming left and right. And one of the biggest things they're realizing is that sleep is the secret to performing at your best level. It seems almost counterintuitive because it's so obvious. Uh, sleep is not just important in a physical aspect, though that's obviously important, but it's more important for your mental aspect. So I've spoken with coaches, athletic coaches. Um, some Major League Baseball teams have told me that they have their athletes come to the stadium hours before the game to make sure that they're sleeping enough, that they get a nap in a controlled environment. And one uh, pitching coach for the Texas Rangers was telling me this is even more important for pitchers. So if you're a baseball fan, you realize that pitchers come in all different shapes and sizes. You know, you can have a tall, lanky guy, and you can have a short squat guy, and they can be equally good. And that's because their job isn't necessarily to throw a ball faster than anybody else. Their job is to throw a ball that the other guy can't hit. So half of their job is a mental job. And athletic trainers now know that sleep is a vital part of winning that mental game. And there's other aspects beyond just, just baseball. Astronauts, for instance, are now told while they're in the missions to sleep before they do a vital part of their mission. And they've found this because studies have suggested that sleeping helps us focus more than taking a nap, um, more than any other thing you can do. And then there's um, perhaps the most important part is the US military. They've realized that sleep is a crucial part of decision making. So without sleep, our brains go from our greatest evol evolutionary asset to our biggest disadvantage. And researchers know this from looking at the first Gulf War. They realized that after looking at the war, that some of the biggest causes of US casualties was friendly fire. And one of the biggest causes of friendly fire is sleeplessness. So all the training we had, all the technology that you could have on a battlefield simply disappeared when the weakness of the human body without getting enough sleep. So in the future, researchers now think that 10 years from now, the soldier of the future will basically have a wristwatch that he, wear, he or she wears that will tell the commander how much some sleep somebody is getting. 
And not only that, how much sleep they, how much their sleep deficit will come into effect maybe five or 10 hours from now. Because the idea isn't just, okay, how strong are you? How many bullets do you have? How much food do you have? But how much mental capacity do you have? So they can say, okay, you're gonna go out into a mission. And five hours from now, we know you're going to get sleepy. So we know in seven hours from now, you're gonna start making bad decisions. And those bad decisions might start a, uh, a cycle, which then makes it harder for us to win whatever, whatever the mission is. To take that area, to, to make these other people uh, you know, distribute food, food, whatever it is, the, the wide range of uh, jobs a soldier can do. So the idea is that, okay, you know, we know you're gonna drop off in seven hours from now, so five hours from now, we need you to take a nap, or we need you to, to drink coffee. We need you to do something to focus on your brain, on the mental aspect. So how can the rest of us get more sleep? That's probably the, the most important question. And one thing you need to, we all need to realize is that sleep can come in many different forms. You know, so many of us are told that you need to get eight hours of sleep, and we don't even know where that comes from. Um, the basic idea for researchers is that you need one hour of sleep for every two hours that you're awake. Um, but they never really explain that. And not only that, we're always told, you know, if you don't get eight hours sleep, then all these bad things are gonna happen, and they never really explain what that is. So it's almost sleep anxiety. Few of us know, though, that how we sleep now is almost completely opposite of how our bodies are built to sleep. So naturally, we're built to fall asleep not long after the sun goes down. We're built then to stay that way for a couple hours, wake up sometime after midnight, stay awake for an hour or so, and then go back to sleep. And this shows up in historical records from the Canterbury Tales to the 16th century French physician manuals. This was the whole first sleep and the second sleep. And that time in between is a time when historically we had the equivalent of a day spa. Your, your body, you had more prolactin and your hormone, which basically makes you feel content. It's the same hormone that goes through chickens when they're on an egg and they're sitting there, you know, contented haze. So the idea was that you would wake up in the middle of the night and you could think about your dreams. You could kind of plot the day ahead. You could talk to the person next to you. You could do anything else you might want to do in the middle of the night with your loved one. Um, <laughs> so now what's changed all that is electric lights and technology and every, everything else. So when you're on your computer at night, when you are you know, watching a movie, when you're in a room like this, our brains are built so that sunlight is the only bright light. That's the only thing we understand. And so we think of any bright lights, we still think of it as sunlight. So you think, okay, I need to stay awake longer. I need to, stay awake to keep working. I mean, that's what the basic, basis of jet lag is. It's something that can't happen in future, in, in nature, naturally. You can't get out of sync with the sun. But we can now because we have jet engines. So one thing researchers now know too is that it's not just getting eight hours sleep in one big block because they've established that we never naturally got these long blocks. What we need to do is to focus on how much sleep you're getting over 24 hours. So say you get five hours a night or six hours of sleep a night because you, know, you have kids or you have a job or all these other reasons. You know, most of us get, don't get much sleep not because we hate sleep but because we have lives and we have bills and we have everything else. Um, so researchers say that if you can get naps during the day, if you can do all these other things, you know, try to, to change your, your, uh, your sleep cycle um, and your approach to sleep, that can be just as important as getting this one eight hour long block. So sleep, when, they, when you look at it, is the secret to performing at your highest level. It's not only a secret performing at your highest level, but it's also being the best version of yourself. You know, we can see, it's clear with sleep, that you are going to perform at a better intellectual level. Studies have shown that just help, helping students get more sleep over a whole school year has helped their SAT scores jump by as much as 15%. Didn't change the teachers, didn't change the materials, all you basically changed was the learning environment, and you changed that learning environment by having somebody get more sleep, which seems very basic, but it's very easy to overlook this thing when you're just lying there at night, especially if you're not walking into a wall and, and hurting yourself. So I hope the, the message you take away from this is that sleep is this amazing 
part of, and mysterious part of your life. And it's this mysterious part of your life that can help you in so many different ways and become, help you become the best version of yourself.